Karibu tena. You are still watching us right here on Ask the Ministers of God program on MBCI TV. Tonight, a uh, very robust conversation we are having right here with a very, very potential panel made up of Apostle Dan Gishima, our resident minister, and also missionary Andrew, uh, joining us tonight and helping us to navigate through this particular conversation on God's discipline and punishment. We are also inviting you to continue giving us your opinions and your feedback on 23814 and also on our social media page that is MBCI TV for Facebook. And of course, we'll continue to be glad uh, mm -hmm. to see some of your responses on these. Mm -hmm. Tena, servants of God, mm -hmm. just before I get back to Apostle uh, Missionary Andrew, of course, mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you had given us examples even in the scriptures of how some people actually met uh, God's punishment examples of Anania and Sapphira. Now, when you look today, mm -hmm. how do you say um, maybe for people who have maybe persisted maybe in sin or maybe in rebellion, maybe in iniquity, mm -hmm. how, what forms of punishment are meted on them? Um, the, just like also Anania and Sapphira, for them it was death. Um, it's still possible for the same. I think even except for the people who knew what was going on with Anani and Safira, mm -hmm. I think for people who had Anani and Safira have died, probably they thought it was just uh, maybe a normal death or something. Mm -hmm. So I believe death is still a punishment even to this day. And could be some people are dying because of mm -hmm. their own uh, sins but it's not mentioned that way. They will say it is because of something else. Mm -hmm. So that is one of them. But uh, there are still many other forms that we still find even in the New Testament that were used to show God's displeasure. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the withdrawal of God's grace upon somebody's life. Mm -hmm. If somebody, for example, was serving God, was in, in ministry and was mm -hmm. doing well, as a form of punishment, he, this person, God withdraws his grace from their life. They used to preach, they used to do God's work in a certain way. Today they can no longer do that. Another form is withdrawal of God's favor upon somebody's life so that this person begins to experience unusual hardness, unusual difficulties in his own life, in his own family, and I mean, even people who knew this person, we look at him and ask him, did you sin against God? Mm. Because the things we see happening in your life, they're indicative of punishment. Mm. So yes, withdrawal of grace, withdrawal of um, God's favor, and unusual <coughs> hardship and toil, mm. which was actually what God gave to Adam. He said the land will not produce. Mm. Because of your sin, you will sweat. Yeah, so those are some of the ways God oh. can still punish mm -hmm. today. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Apostle, uh, the, the, uh, just as uh, uh, missionary Andrew has put it, mm -hmm. these are some, also some forms uh, that actually people can be able to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this should be a wake-up call. I mean, this one should actually alert them uh, that if you don't do things the way God really uh, wants you to do, mm -hmm. there are repercussions. Definitely. <clears throat> like they say, you know, actions or so what people do have consequences. Mm. And uh, if you continue to do the wrong thing, of course, mm. there are consequences with that. If you do the right thing, there are also consequences with that. Mm. And another thing also that we all must understand as human beings living on planet Earth, you know, this land that we call Earth, has been given to us by God mm. and he's watching over us. You know God's business. I have spoken and said many times mm. that mm. God's business mm. on planet Earth is the man he created in his own image. He created so many things, mm. but his eyes are on the man that he created in his own image to see what are his actions. Is he doing things according to the instructions that I've given him? If he does not follow the instructions, then for sure, God's punishment is imminent. Mm. But again, if he repents, 
He's a very merciful God. God will just forgive, you know, whatever wrongs the person that has done. And we can even see it. You remember the woman who was caught up in adultery, according to Matthew chapter 8, and then she was brought to, to, to Jesus. And, you know, Jesus looked at her and said, look, where are your accusers? Mm. When everybody disappeared, and Jesus just forgave her and told her to go and sin no, no more. Mm. So the thing here is that God will never compromise sin mm. in somebody's life. And if God is actually pointing the sin that you are committing <coughs> and mm. you are not ready to repent, mm. it's just a matter of time. Yeah. You get punishment here mm. Mm. and in the life to come, there is more punishment still awaiting you. Mm. Because God must do justice. Actually, being punished for what you have done wrong it's justice. And, you know, God has no two ways about it. <laughs> you know, the way people try to, you know, there is a way that people try to, to, <coughs> to categorize mm -hmm. sins. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they say God's grace is sufficient for all of us. No, God's grace does not teach you to continue in sin. Mm -hmm. God's grace helps you mm -hmm. to abandon sin and pursue righteousness and holiness mm. of God. Wow. Mm. So for sure, God is God. Mm -hmm. He'll never change what he said. The soul that sinneth shall surely die. Yeah, die. That's what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Apostle. And of course, we'll spare some few minutes also to uh, get some more uh, details also on uh, discipline or God, God's discipline. Yeah. But just before that, mm -hmm. uh, missionary Andrew, mm -hmm. when you're looking at God's punishment, in relation to a believer mm -hmm. a non-believer mm -hmm. one who is born again and one who is not born again mm -hmm. what picture can you draw what we see in scripture again is that for one who is not born again uh, his judgment or punishment is a bit different in that um, it will be based on his knowledge of uh, the truth so you may find, for example, somebody who doesn't know the scriptures or the word, uh, he may be doing things that are not right, but it's like he's getting away with it. Mm -hmm. But somebody who is a believer seems like he's not getting away with it. His punishment is more swift. Uh, Paul asks a question, what do we have to judge those people who are not part of God's house? Mm -hmm. So, um, those who are believers, they must be more careful um, to live according to God's standards. Those who are sinners, their judgment will still come, depending on their knowledge of the truth. Yes. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, post people can actually be wary of the deception that uh, uh, there are those who are non-believers and it's like, people are thinking there is nothing that is happening to them. <laughs> Actually, for the non-believers, you know, there is one scripture that says, uh, God is not pleased by the death of a non-believer or somebody who does not know God. Mm -hmm. But that means God is giving them a period of time for them to do what? Mm -hmm. To repent. Mm -hmm. But if they do not actually seize the moment and they repent of their wrongdoing, mm -hmm. then for sure judgment is, wow. is imminent. Mm -hmm. So there is nobody here who, who God, and God speaks to people in different ways, mm -hmm. diverse ways. For example, if we give testimonies, mm -hmm. including you, Magisho, because I know you are born again, mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. Apostle Andrew here, mm -hmm. if we give our testimonies of the circumstances and the situations under which mm -hmm. we said enough with sin, now Jesus, forgive me. Some of us with a lot of tears mm -hmm. when we were getting born again, because you could see for sure these are the wrongs that I have done. Mm -hmm. And for sure I was heading in the wrong di direction. I was get heading to hell. You remember the rich man in hell, mm -hmm for sure he was also for want mm. 
so he went he rightfully went there because he squandered or he wasted mm -hmm. the chances the opportunities that he was given for him yeah. to repent <coughs> so mm -hmm. for sure god is very fair mm -hmm. to non non i mean to non christians and to christians mm -hmm. He's very fair. He's very fair. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, mm -hmm. uh, maybe in a, in a few minutes, uh, Missionary Andrew, let's mm -hmm. look at the part of discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, maybe even in the natural in the natural way, uh, you'll hear people saying that I'm what I am today because of the discipline that was instilled to me mm -hmm. by my parents, uh, mm -hmm. by my elder ones, maybe when I was young. So how should a believer and what do they need to do mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to help them embrace God's mm. discipline. Okay, like I said, sometimes discipline is those measures that are put to train you. Mm. For example, in the natural, uh, young people, our parents put something they call curfew. You're supposed to be home by a certain time. Wow. Those are measures that have been put there to make sure you learn to obey your parents. You are supposed to do a certain uh, or certain uh, things in the house. You are supposed to wake up at a certain time in the morning. You are supposed to complete your assignments. You are supposed to, and when you go, you are supposed to communicate. All those are measures. You, you've not done anything wrong as yet. Mm. But these are measures that have been put there to make sure you learn to be an obedient wow. person. The same with Christianity. When you read the Bible, there are very many things. God says, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. What is he doing? He is training you in righteousness. So how can you learn? It is by obeying what God is saying. But when you do not obey what God is saying, then there are still other measures that God takes. Just like this parent, he will say, for example, if you don't uh, adhere to curfew, then this is what also will begin to happen in your life. Mm. I have discovered God will allow you sometimes to go through some form of hardships mm. in life just as a form of discipline. Just because, for example, he wants to train you to be responsible in certain things. And that's why, for example, church discipline. You are told if you do something wrong, you are supposed to face the elders. Mm -hmm. If you continue doing it, you are supposed to face a bigger group. If you continue doing it, then you are taken before the entire congregation. <laughs> you see, all these are measures yes. to help you mm -hmm. to see that God wants you to change your ways. Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, listen to what you are being told. Listen to the things God is saying, learn from God's word mm. and, and the warnings that God is giving. Wow. Yes. We, we, we have like a minute, Apostle, mm. uh, on discipline. Yeah. And maybe this is where uh, most Christians, actually the, the, the entire body of Christ, should actually pay attention to because if uh, a Christian would actually be disciplined, then there is no even maybe any need to fear punishment. You know, mm. when you are not disciplined, most likely you end up in sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, that's that's the that's the thing. Exactly. If you are not disciplined, you end up in sin. Just like what uh, uh, Apostle has said, that um, there are rules and regulations mm. that you are supposed to follow. Mm. As a Christian also, there are things that you are not supposed to do. And you know them very well. Okay, you must go by that. You know what is wrong and what is right. You know, you do what is right, you don't do what is wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you go by that. So the moment you deviate from that, then already you have crossed over because you are not disciplined. Now, I think you have heard uh, a lot of ministers, and they say it very well I, when, when you listen to them preaching and saying that a Christian must be disciplined. Yes. In terms of time, a Christian must be disciplined. Mm -hmm. In terms of giving tithes and offerings, mm -hmm. a Christian must be disciplined. disciplined. 
Mm. Okay, for example, a mangicho, if you don't give your tithes mm. and you don't give mm. your offerings, mm. you know, at some point in time when you get your salary, mm. you know, utajaribu kutafutiria na pesa nilikuwa nazo, nimefanya nini nazo. But when you go back to the scriptures, you will know mm. that once you don't tithe and you don't give, mm. mashimo, mm. imekueko. Mm. And that's why you cannot be able to explain why you miss the display wow. mm. in wow. that particular area mm. and that is the way go to display you mm. so that next time you don't repeat the <laughs> same mistakes and there are so many examples that we can give <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much apostle wow uh, mm -hmm. you're pressed for time but that was quite amazing we want to appreciate our very very uh, great panel for this discussion tonight missionary andrew mm -hmm. uh, karibu sana and thank you so much for mm -hmm. such great insights on this particular matter thank you and also apostle dan gishimo resident minister we appreciate a lot also your contribution in helping us understand this particular subject mm -hmm. thank you so much our dear viewer also for your uh presence your company and also your input your feedback we appreciate so much we'll do it again next week at a time like this you can be sure to find us with another very very interesting conversation on behalf of the entire team that has actually also participated in making this a success have a blessed evening my name is mangicho mola Nuggets of Wisdom with Apostle Dan Gishimo. Living according to God's canon, all standards will keep you away from sinful lifestyle. A sinful life will always result into injuries. But sin has a permanent cure, which is repentance and living a godly life.